Do you ever feel like manifestation is just another thing on your to-do list that you don't have time for? Like your spiritual practice is something that you have to do? Honestly, you're not alone because I felt that way too. Something that's really changed my relationship with manifestation is blending it into my lifestyle so that no matter what I'm doing, I'm also manifesting. I call this manifestation as a lifestyle and it single-handedly made the entire manifestation journey more enjoyable for me and I've seen my desires show up with a lot more ease. Manifesting as a lifestyle has made manifestation go from feeling like a task to something I just naturally do because it's who I am. If you'd like to learn more about this, I've created a step-by-step guide for you. I'll link it in my show notes so you can check it out. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Corley. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so much for being here. And now it's time to get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. Today, we are doing a end of year, beginning of year ritual together, and it's really mainly just journaling. So if you are listening to this while you are driving, feel free to listen and kind of think through, or you can kind of come back to this at another time. But I was going to share a little bit about my reflection of the year as well. So we'll kind of guide you through it. And then maybe as you're thinking, I will share my story. So we're doing 2023 gratitude and kind of reflection and closing it out. And then 2024, kind of setting that intention, what's your word of the year and going from there. So I wanted this to be a very kind of casual ritual setting, because I feel like sometimes my rituals are very formal, which I love. And I think that's great. But because this is the podcast, you guys are my people, my inner circle, I wanted to be this for this to be like a fun grab your journal, hang out, like chat with me and let's talk about our year and what we want 2024 to look like. I know I am publishing this early, but I know some of you like to kind of get to your rituals and end of year, beginning of year intention setting way before Christmas and kind of the last week of the new year or the last week of the year before the new year. For example, I already went through this exact kind of method and process the last week. So the week of um, after Thanksgiving. Tom and I actually do this together every single year. It's one of our only traditions that we do that we're like really, really adamant about. The rest of, I think, our relationship is so free-flowing. But this is something that we always set aside time to do where we both sit through, talk about 2023, and talk about 2024. And I find it such a like a good closeout for the year and a new sense of clarity always comes through. And if you're not a big journaler, I never force people to journal, but today I'm going to force you to. I honestly, with my unfiltered, unapologetic kind of thought is journaling and the power of pen to paper is unmatched compared to typing it out on a computer even, or typing it out on your phone. And if you're scared of someone reading it or someone kind of going through your journal, maybe you don't have that much privacy, you can shred it and throw it away later. Um, Kind of you can keep it and shred it. You don't have to keep this forever. But I have just tried so many different methods and techniques. And I just feel the most kind of divine wisdom comes through when I journal, which is why I want to share my experience with you. Maybe for you, you experience divine guidance through typing it on your computer or your phone. But for me, the power of pen to paper has proven itself time and time again. So long story short, we are doing a ritual together. It's a very casual format. You might need to replay some things and kind of come back. I know I talk kind of fast. So you might need to kind of pause as I'm talking through to give you time to actually journal yourself. And secondly, I really, 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 really do encourage you to write this down. Even if it's just on like printer paper, that's what I did actually for me and Tom. I made this little template for us and I just made it on a Word document and then we wrote together. So why do we want to reflect on our year and why do we want to kind of just do this? What's the point? I think 
self-reflection, self-awareness is one of the most underrated ingredients on the manifestation journey. I think we love to skip it and we love to, we in general, are constantly observing. So we love to keep it in our mind. But I think taking that self-awareness and self-observation and putting it onto paper almost detaches it from ourselves. And you're able to objectively, less emotionally, less personally kind of influence, you're allowed to look at it and see it from a different perspective than you do in your mind. I think a lot of us do this in our heads. These are probably questions you've asked yourself before. These are probably things you've thought through. And just try it before you kind of are like, pile. this was not helpful. If you are still listening to this, that means you're still curious. So try writing these down. I These questions are the simplest questions. These questions are, in my opinion, very natural reflecting questions. But reflecting in your mind versus reflecting on paper are two very different things. And that is why I really think that power of pen to paper is unmatched. So... Let's dive into it. 2023, however this year was for you, I just want you to take a second, close your eyes, and just connect to the energy. What I did to kind of do this is I just kind of, actually, I'm a very visual person, so I actually went through my pictures on my phone and looked at what I was up to in January, February, March, month by month. I did a quick kind of five minute year in review scroll on my own photos and just observed. If that doesn't resonate with you, just do it in your head and reflect at what was happening at every point of the year. I use my phone um, or like my pictures because I think it gives me a visual memory and it can transport me super fast into what happened? How was I actually feeling in that moment versus what does the picture look like? I take a lot of pictures. That's part of my job, but I also love documenting and I document the mundane. I document the boring. I document the sad and the happy. So I really do get a good snapshot. If that's not for you, just reflect in your mind. Just do a quick snapshot of your year. And at this point, you're welcome to pause, but I will keep going. So what I noticed personally for me is this year was a lot more shadow filled than I realized. I have been talking about this a little bit on my Instagram. As I was reflecting on 2023, I kind of forgot that I went through some of my darkest, deepest shadows and fears. And I feel so proud that I got through it and I almost don't even remember them anymore. But it's also like such a ode to how far we really have come. So start to think about what are the things that surprised you and what are the things that went really, really well? So our first question I want you to write down is what went well for you in 2023 and what didn't go so well for you in 2023? Feel free to pause as always. But the reason I like to reflect what went well, what didn't go so well is you just get a little bit more clarity as to what was my definition of good? What was my definition of bad? And something that surprised me is I had some of my biggest fears manifest and I actually put that in the category of what went well. Why? Because after those fears manifested, I became so much stronger, so much more unshakable, and so many good things and good shifts and evolutions came out of that, that I actually considered that as that was a win for me is that I was able to endure and go through them and see through to the other side. So I think it might surprise you what you write down on your list. There is no right or wrong, um, but just a perspective that might help. The next question is, if you did set a word or an intention for your year, how did it go? Did you forget about it? Did you carry it through? Or did you forget about it, but it still ended up being your theme for the year? Just reflect on that intention if you did set one or your word if you set one at the beginning of the year. For me, my word was truth. And I set that word at a time where I was just feeling like I wasn't expressing my truth as well as I could. And I wasn't I felt like I wasn't being honest with myself, but I also feel like I wasn't living my truest expression. And it just felt like a lot was off. Um, Once again, here are some of the shadows, right? So for me, um, the word did kept coming back, but 
how the year went for me was actually peeling back everything that was a facade, everything that was unnecessary, and really diving into my shadows to find what is my truth? Who am I? How do I want to show up? And building that from the bottom up. Um, You guys probably have heard about it, but I made this, I kind of restructured my entire business and have really shifted my focus to my app and my membership, as well as one product, which is my step-by-step guide. And It is such a simple in thought product, but it is who I am in a book and it is everything I've learned and everything that's worked for me. And that was months of my creative process in paper, as well as like 15 years of my manifestation journey. And it feels like currently the most truthful expression of my manifestation philosophy, because on the online space, and this is something I don't really talk about too much, but just being a business owner, being a having a presence on the online space and what that means um, is a huge thing that I work through behind the scenes. I actually was just talking to someone yesterday. I don't share about it that much because I feel like it's irrelevant. I know I do not have like a business podcast. I'm not helping you how to run your own business, but it's something I'm actually really good at. And actually behind the scenes in my life, I have so many friends or peers who I do help run their businesses or I do give them coaching and advice and they see it work. And I know it's a skill that I have, but something that I really worked on personally for me finding was finding my truth in my business and in my kind of in the business that I've built. It's been five years and five years ago, I was a very different person. And who am I now? And how is that accurately reflecting? So for me, that looked like peeling back and shifting my entire team, reclaiming my own truth and my own creativity and restructuring in a way that honors and celebrates my truth rather than takes that away. While I was in it, I will be so honest, it felt like my world was crumbling. And logically, I know that that is such a good thing. But while I was in it, it was really hard. But I feel so empowered in my truth. I feel so clear and like confident in my truth this at this point, like in December, where in January, I was the most lost and unaligned that I had been in a really long time. So it feels so good to get to the other side. That was such a long version, but I hope it's helpful for you to hear the way I reflect if you need inspo on how do I even reflect. I used to not share as much behind the scenes of what I'm going through, once again, out of just like this insecurity that you don't need to know, but I'm starting to understand that the way I process things is very different um, or very unique And the way I apply it helps me in my manifestation journey so heavily. So that is why I'm sharing all this. So thank you for just listening along and letting me start to share my truth even more, which was my intention for the entire year. The next question is, what did you learn this year? What lessons did you learn? And I interpret lessons as what were some of the insecurities you were made aware about What were some things that you learned about yourself? Like you might be stronger than you think. What are some things you learned about people in your life? Maybe you learned certain friendships aren't worth giving time to. All of these are actually true for me, which is why I can spit these out. (laughs) So what did you learn in all the areas of your life? And I like to break down my areas of my life by self, um, family and friends, romantic relationships, if any, money, career, and my spirit. That is, and health, sorry, the seventh one. So that is kind of how I look at, and you can answer, this might be too long for you, but this is how I do it. I will answer most of these questions using that framework of those seven categories. And if there's other categories that are important to you, maybe for you, um, I don't know, your home and maintaining your home is super important. And you might have other categories that are important for you to reflect upon. But those I think are the most generic and kind of omnipresent for everybody. So once again, that's self, your family and friends, your romantic relationships, money, your career, health and spirituality. And so those are the seven um, that I always look at everything through. And so feel free to carry those through. So for me, what I learned, 
I was really highlighted in kind of in pairing with my word of the year. I really learned that my people pleasing and especially how I show up in my business, people pleasing was on high. I wanted to people please my community and my audience. I wanted to give them what they were asking for. But in doing so, the biggest thing, and I'm going to go down a rabbit hole here, but the biggest thing that I noticed was my audience wasn't always willing to pay for my offerings. And that led me to drastically decrease my prices, decrease my offerings, or just feel guilty whenever I did create something because I was like, well, they're not going to want to buy it anyways. What's the point? And that really affected my self-worth for a long time, actually. And so working through the root of my people pleasing and not because someone else is asking something of me, but why do I feel the need to please others? And why is my conviction not enough? Um, That was huge for me. And I feel like I still have more to grow, but I feel like I came a long way so far. The next thing, one of the things I kind of mentioned that I learned is not everybody in your life is meant to take the same space as they once did. I have had some friendships in my life that have been around for so many years. And repetitively this year, I learned that the way I show up is very different than the way they want to show up. And that doesn't mean that they're not worth my time or that they're bad people. It just means I can respect myself and not have those expectations. And I don't have to keep that relationship the exact same as it has been. On the other hand, some of my relationships got so much deeper because of truthful and honest conversations. That includes my like romantic relationship with Tom, of course, as well as with my family and some of my friends. So that is one of the biggest lessons I learned is like people, just other people have such a big impact on me. And how do I respond to that? Through people pleasing, through energy work, through not sharing what's on my mind or trying to mold to what they want me to be or what I think that they want me to be. That was a huge lesson for me this year. So take some time and think about the different lessons that have come up for you. I always get a ton of questions in my DMs from people asking how I can manifest X. The truth is you can really manifest anything as long as it's for the greatest good. And if you're having trouble manifesting something right now, or you feel stuck on your journey, I have a really beautiful resource I've made for you. It's a free quiz. It's called the Manifestation Archetype Quiz. And it's something that I've created so you can find out your manifestation style to give you more clarity on your spiritual journey. After taking the quiz, you're going to receive the best resources for your specific archetype to help you attract your desires based on where you're at and what you want to create. So you can find a link to the quiz in the show notes or just head to my website at www.affirmation-addict.com. And then the last question, actually second to last question, is what are you grateful for that happened this year? And think about this in just a broader sense of what are you grateful for? And for the things that you're not grateful for, how can you find gratitude for them? So I had some of the scariest my biggest fears manifest this year. And I don't want to talk about them because I don't want to kind of accentuate the energy of it. But it's some fears around people I love and their health. And I literally had them kind of pop up right in front of my face and I had to deal with them. And I never wanted it to happen. I never wanted to deal with it or even be faced with the possibility of it. But the blessing in that was I learned One, how dependent I am on that person or those people, as well as that I can handle really stressful situations and I need to trust myself more. And two, that everything is temporary. And it really gave me such a strong reminder to be where my feet are. As someone who is so passionate about manifestation, it is so easy to spend a lot of time or way too much time in the past doing our kind of reflecting work or in the future, thinking about what we want, where we forget to be here right now. And I think that was such a big reminder for me is to be where my feet are and really love to be where my feet are. Even if it's not my final destination, what else can I find gratitude for in this moment? So take some time and think about what you're grateful for and how can you be grateful for some of the things that you're actually not grateful for. And lastly, Just kind of look 
at this entire page. Look at what went well, what didn't go well, how your year went in accordance to your theme or your intention, what you learned in all the different areas of your life, what you're grateful for and what you are reframing to be grateful for. And just look at that and notice that that is 2023. That is this year. And now we get to move forward. This doesn't have to mean anything. This doesn't have to define how you're moving forward. This just is. Notice it, acknowledge, accept it. But now we get to move forward without letting that necessarily impact us in any negative or positive way. It's allowed to be neutral. So instead of looking at 2023 as my best year or my worst year, what if we just looked at it as a year of our life and allowing it to shape us and evolve us in a non supercharged way because we love charging things very emotionally. We love assigning good and bad and worst or best. And I sometimes think that there's so much more power in having a neutral lens to it. So look at 2023, do a little bit of a prayer of gratitude or an affirmation of this was a beautiful year and I'm ready for the next year to be even more beautiful. And let's move forward. I called that as my little bullet point, let go, release and accept, and let's move forward. So 2024, what is our plan for the year? So just take a deep breath. This is a lot, especially if you've been listening this whole time and journaling. It's a lot. So take a break. Me and Tom took a little tea break. He made some chai and we just took a little bit of break, went outside and kind of refreshed our energy and we came back. So that's what we did when we ritualized this. So feel free to pause and come back to talk about 2024. So if you are here, what is I always start with a word for the year um, because I think it's a very nice way to simplify, condense, and be a guiding kind of reminder in the back of your head. Also, just from a symbolic perspective, I my business is all around affirmations, affirmation addict, affirm it. And words are so powerful. And I love playing with the energy of words and the different connotations that our words have and get creative, get spicy with it. I love creating and choosing kind of contradictory terms. And it doesn't have to be this extravagant word. It can be such a simple word. Like for me, it was truth, but it can have really deep meaning, whatever meaning you want to assign to it with however you want to approach it. So remember, as you pick your word, it can mean anything you want it to mean. Don't put pressure about it being the perfect word. But the best way kind of that I like to decide my word for the year, there's millions of words in the alphabet, is to just kind of brain dump and write down five to 10 different words that seem like what is 2024 for me. And if you have no idea where to start, just close your eyes and take a second and just imagine you're 12 months forward from now. Another 12 months have passed by. You are reflecting with me at the end of 2024. And what do you wish or hope that this year culminated for you? What do you wish or hope that this year taught you and ended up being like for you? And what were some of the highlights and the lowlights, which we love? Um, What were some of those? And allow yourself to kind of transport forward and then come back to the moment when you're ready and write down a few words for you. For me, the three words that kept coming up were consistency, confidence, and rich. So I will, I haven't picked yet. I mean, it's when I'm recording this is December 6th. So I am not fully sure what my word is. I will confirm it for you. Um, in like the new year episode, I will kind of share what I'm manifesting, but the reason I chose, and I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between those three years, three words is because consistency was kind of my learning lesson of the year of 2023. But now I want to just execute on consistency and my definition of consistency. It doesn't mean it has to look the same, but 
consistency and constantly trying to show up consistently and trying to get better consistently trying to be present like it can be attached to any phrase so consistency doesn't have to mean i have a perfect morning routine every single day for 25 minutes at 5 a.m that doesn't necessarily need to be your definition or mine um so for me consistency is like how can i it's almost like a ode to me knowing who I am and how I want to show up and how I handle the world. So that's what consistency meant for me. Um, confidence. I really learned this year that I dim my confidence. Internally, I have so much confidence. Um, I know what I'm good at, but I am nervous to express that. And I learned that with my truth. I learned that I hide or undermine or just pretend honestly that I'm not as confident as I am because people pleasing, because I don't want to rub people the wrong way. I want to make sure people feel welcome. And one of the biggest things is like, I have actually a super successful business and ask any single person who has met me in person or any of my friends, I will never utter a word about my business unless it is asked. Why? I don't know. I know I have so much wisdom to share if they're asking for it. But I also want to, when I do speak about it, be confident. I'm not going to just sit there and talk about how successful I am. However, I want to be able to openly and confidently share if asked or if it's relevant to the conversation. Like, this is what I do and I'm really proud of it. And confidence for me, it's internal. Externally, I think I know how to put on a show of confidence, but it's, I know enough about myself and I'm self-aware enough to the point where I know I need even more confidence from the inside out. I need even more confidence in some of the things that I never thought I could do. I need more confidence without guilt in the life that I've created and seeing my other friends or peers not have this level of freedom or abundance or happiness and not feel guilty, but having confidence that not only did I create this and I'm openly telling other people how to create this, but I also did work really hard and confidence that my journey was worth it. So confidence for me. And then this last one is interesting and I am almost nervous. I can feel that I'm nervous to admit this, but the last one is rich. And I have always been obsessed with learning about money, energy, and abundant energy. And the word rich actually triggered me for such a long time. Um, And in my opinion, I am rich financially, but also in every other area. Um, I know that I am so blessed, but I don't like to feel it. I don't allow myself to bask in the richness and juiciness of the life and surroundings of the world. And That's what richness means to me, not necessarily like financial richness, although I think everyone is always down for more financial richness. But for me, it's like, I want to feel rich in my generosity. I want to feel rich in like the deliciousness and juiciness of life. Like I want to feel rich in love and love for myself and for others. I want to feel rich in my experiences and my memories and the joy I'm having day to day. Like that's what richness means to me. Like I want it to feel like decadent, like thinking in food terms, I'm such a foodie, but like thinking of like a really yummy, rich, decadent chocolate brownie. And for all of you who've been here since day one, you know, brownies are so important to me because that was my first manifestation. And so maybe, I don't know, I feel like, I'm getting way more excited about this term than any other term. And another reason for rich is because the one area I rarely talk about manifesting um, very upfront and openly is money because it is such a triggering concept. And I'm so nervous to trigger people, even if it's with love and with good intention. But I also am well aware that it's something that so many people are working on. So maybe it is something that I need to think of the richness of life as well as richness of money and how do I help other people create that forward as well as myself. So very vulnerable conversation here. Thank you as always for listening, but I hope you were able to kind of start to come up with your word of the year. 
The next thing I want you to do is we're going to set some intentions. Intentions can look like bullet points. It can look like affirmations. So in the present tense, or it can just look like different phrases and details and visual imagery that you have. So we're going to set some intentions. And the way I want you to do this is through the categories. So the categories are, if you're journaling, make what I do is I like write each category and I leave like four or five lines or some space between. So the categories are self, relationships, so family and friends, romantic relationships, your work, money, health, and spirituality. If there are other categories that you want to put on here, go ahead. But these are the categories that I do. And basically what I do is on the left-hand side, so on the first side that you're writing, um, where all the categories are, I write down a few intentions and how I want that to look. So for me, for self, I wrote, I want to be more confident. I want to be more decisive. I'm so indecisive um, that I really just want to be more confident in my decisions, especially when they're the most irrelevant decisions, like what do you want to eat? So I just really, that sounds so good to me. So it can be as simple as that. Or if it's like for work, it can be very specific. Like I would love to get a promotion to this job title, or I want to hit this salary mark and make sure these intentions feel realistic to you. If they feel too out of reach, I want you to kind of table that and maybe write that at the bottom, but don't use that for this exercise because the more out of reach ones, feeling out of reach ones are the ones that we have to do more inner work around. And that kind of becomes more manifestation themed and coded. So start by going through this list. Maybe in your family relationships, you want to get less triggered and you want to have better communication with your mom or your dad or a sibling or someone you love. For your health, for me, my health one was I wanted to go do more cardio days at my gym. I skip cardio days because I hate them, but I know it'd probably be not only good for my body, but also my heart, Um, literally cardiovascular. I think it would be really good for me. Spiritually, I want to get back into sitting still. I have never needed meditation in order to manifest, but I also think getting still is a timeless practice. So I want to come back to getting still. So these are some of your intentions. And think about if your intention is more focused on like the what, the how, or the how you feel. And then after you write all of those intentions on the right hand side of that paper, I'm imagining like a T chart basically for each category on the right hand side, I want you to write what is one thing you can commit to that's a little bit more actionable to help you get there or what has ever stopped you so far from set in, from achieving this attention and how are you going to get yourself to this atten- intention. So for me, right, indecision, one of the things that allows me to be so indecisive is I don't want to like make the wrong decision and get blamed for it. So it's like, okay, the antidote to that is confidence and allowing myself to be honest with what I actually want. In my um, relationships, it's communication and having the confidence to have the hard conversations. So getting actionable or just acknowledging some of those kind of pain points or the natural ways that you might not fulfill these intentions. What are some workarounds that you can do to help you fulfill these intentions for all of the ones that you wrote down? And if this is overwhelming to you, I recommend just picking one for each category. I had a few for each and it mostly ended up to be the same kind of action item. That way you have like a little action plan of these are my little spiritual and health focused and self focused and relationship focused things I need to integrate into my daily life. When you finish that, the last thing I want you to do is just make a list, another T-chart. I love T-charts. I think it shows good contrast is make a list of in 2024, what am I available for 
and what am I not available for? This is another version for you to kind of dive deeper into those intentions, dive deeper into the different areas of your life and express it in a different way. Because sometimes we might say, we want my soulmate, but you're not available for someone who is, I don't know, um, is dishonest with you. And you get more clarity as to what is actually important to you and your value scale. And you get more and more important um, awareness and self-awareness as to your definition of it. Because we love using these vague terms that we all use, right? Like, I want to make more money. But what does that actually mean? What does that look like? And what are you not available for in terms of money? Are you not available for seeing your bank account reach a certain number? Are you not available for not having cash on hand ever? So it's almost a better and more clear way for you to define for yourself what those different intentions actually look like in your day-to-day life. Because we forget to kind of personify and actualize what we're manifesting and what our intentions are. It's very easy to like look at it on a piece of paper, but what is that in the 3D? What does that feel like? What triggers might be associated with it? And I think this list of available and unavailable is a really good way to start to dig into it. Once you finish that list, that is what you're going to do. You're done. You are welcome to pop on and add a vision board if that's your vibe. If you feel overwhelmed by vision boards and you don't know what you want to put on it, I'm going to invite you to wait and let yourself use these intentions, use this available for not available for list and create a script. One script that if you're writing almost like a journal entry reflecting on how 2024 went at the same time next year, what would you write about 2024? And piece your intentions and your availabilities and your unavailabilities and your word into that year and write a little story about 2024. This is such a fun way to script um, and don't overthink it. You can't really mess it up and just have fun with making that script. That script is like your little manual and story for 2024 and what you're manifesting. And my tip for you is read it at the end of the year and see how much came true. It is so profound and so magical and so powerful to realize how everything we want really is coming true. And it just strengthens your belief in the manifestation process in general. Okay. That was a lot, but thank you for joining this ritual with me. Thank you for listening to my reflections of the year. And I hope that 2023 can feel like a beautiful and well-rounded year and 2024 can be even better for you. So enjoy this ritual. If you do do this, I love hearing your feedback on the podcast. Let me know what the journaling ritual was like for you. Let me know if you learned something new about yourself and all feedback is welcome. Your guys's reviews and comments and just DMs mean the world to me. So anything you have to say, I'm always listening and Thank you for being here and happy ritual. Enjoy yourself. Love you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If this episode resonated with you, it would mean the world to me if you can rate and review the podcast and share it on your social media. So I know to keep creating episodes that are inspiring you to manifest. I'm so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today. And I'd love for you to join the community by following at Affirmation Addict on Instagram. To continue diving into spirituality and manifestation, head over to my website, affirmation-addict.com. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and so much healing energy. 